There we go. Day three in the history books, and day three belonged to one team alone. It was Penta that went through to the grand final, secured themselves a spot in the offline final alongside Team Dignitas, who might not have won the upper bracket final, but still have a shot at the title and have already guaranteed their spot in the offline finals as well. Two teams, however, struggled on day three, and we'll talk about that in just a moment with Sadakist and Thorin joining us on the panel. Good morning, gents. Morning. Morning-ish. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Are you much rested now? Have you adjusted somehow? I mean, it's, it doesn't matter how much rest I get at this point. It's just like constant sleep deprivation <laughs> adding up over time. So I have to sleep for about 24 hours to make up for this. But I don't yeah. think that works, you know. Uh, probably I don't, not. I don't think it works. Anyway, I'll try um, it. day four ahead of us. But let's just reflect back on day three a little bit. So I'm first. Because the two teams really in trouble from yesterday are big and envious. And in particular... We've waited now for three days for Envious to show up. Sure, yeah. It's day four. They've got to show up today. And the thing is, it's not as though, like, the difference is, okay, where, where Big is, they were very, very good until the very end, and then they had the one bad match. So, so they, they don't have to worry too much. Envious hasn't got going yet. I mean, they've maybe yep. had what? I think off the top of my head, the one map that they had in that best of three where they did really well, that's about it. I mean, it, it was the nuke game, basically, they had on yep. day two, I think. That's about it. Beyond that... They've barely ever looked good. They've never looked like dangerous. Like, oh, amazing T set. Oh, get away from this map. You know, they're so scary. There's, at the moment, if I'm all the other teams in this tournament, oh, of course I want to play Envious. They've got the big name and they're the easiest to beat of the good teams, you know. So yeah. it's actually astounding that we could be having this match to decide a team that goes out. Indeed. Uh, talking about the two teams that did do well yesterday, Matt. Penta obviously <laughs> being the obvious one. Surprised a lot of people here. I think some people had them maybe on the bubble of they could be that sort of fourth, fifth, maybe third team. But they've they've gone through the entire tournament without losing a series. Yeah, I think I think a few people are surprised by that. Definitely. I'm obviously they played well at the global finals. Tabson has been excellent. There's no question about that. Uh, but they've they've looked improved in many dimensions. And I think overall, yeah, to be in the position where they are, where they already in the grand final, Did you mean is Sonny? more surprising. Sonny, sorry, what? Yeah, you said Tabson. Tabson. Yeah, yeah. sorry. That, I know you big. meant. Though. Yeah, yeah. Sonny has been really really good. <laughs> the other player as well for them that's been really surprising is obviously HS, yeah. bringing him in out of nowhere. I actually like the teams of this caliber as well. We already talked about taking sort of the international approach, but mm -hmm. they're also taking gambles on younger players like Rops and Mouse Sports is another example. Like he was a player that FPL everyone was like, oh, hacking, hacking. Mouse Sports is a team in a position where they need improvement. Let's take the gamble. Like, if it fails, yeah. what do they lose, right? So it's actually cool to see him come into this lineup. Yeah, and, and Dignitas, uh, Duncan, in a way, when you looked at them on paper, at least in terms of their qualifying form, you'd just be like, there's no way they even get out of the groups on that kind of form. Here they are. They've got a place in the offline finals. And it just shows quality that they have in that team has carried them through with a, with a, a little bit of ingenuity from the in-game leader as well, having to swap to English and yeah. you know, doing it for the first time. And to me, I think actually that if you look at the LAN, the results really bear out that they actually figured this all out during this LAN. Like yeah. They came there on day one. They were really kind of shaky. They barely had a CT side on most maps, you know. And they've gradually improved the map pool, got it together on the CT side. They have a half-decent T side now. All the players are like kind of warmed up. Pretty much everyone at this point in time has had, like we said, I think literally everyone's They're had the only MVP. Team. Everyone has had an MVP yep. performance by now. So, like props to Rubino that he's been able to kind of figure these things out on the fly and mm. move pieces around. And then they they've locked into some of this lineup because obviously they never actually chose originally to sure. have some of the players, but. They've made the right choices. They've cut the right players. So Bodes well, doesn't yeah. it, really, for the offline finals? You have to say, good decision-making in general. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's turn our attention to the uh, first game of today. Of course, we have three games for you uh, today, the first of which is a big one for both teams because it decides the final third spot that they will take in the offline finals. We've got 15 teams in that pool already. They're just waiting for the 16th to join us, and the only two teams in contention are now MV and big um we'll start with big and we'll talk about them you, you made the point duncan that they haven't really had a bad tournament at all no, in fact just all. the last match really they sort of fell short on so presumably they come into this with no sort of you know mental problems in terms of oh god we're playing like horrible or we've got no t sides or we've got no strategies because they have got all of those things no if i'm big i'm coming in thinking it's double elimination we can still win this whole tournament and then who cares about that one match because if you think about it in the group stage they actually looked easily the most impressive to me more than Penta because if you remember they basically styled on people by like giving the opponent one of yep. their better maps still beating them anyway as if to say we've got we've got every map you know and we can play against all you guys we figured out like the weaknesses even on your stronger maps that looked really really impressive and then yeah it was kind of a shock the way they they fell apart in the upper bracket series so I feel like that's the blip on the radar you know the rest of it all looks pretty good I will say they're a team where it's not that they lack firepower, it's just it's very clearly isolated in yeah. a few players. Yes. And if those players play really well, 
then they got a chance. Because, for example, Tabson actually played amazing in that game. They lost to Mirage. He, he had did. like 44 kills. But the problem is if someone like Nex isn't going to show up, if Keeve's a bit more average, now they might have some trouble. So I think the formula's laid out for big to how they win, and they can. Yeah, okay. Uh, Matt, we'll, we'll look at Envy as well now in terms of their lineup. When you look at their lineup, you just go... Oh, but this is a major team. These have got major players, and they've got a, a double it's winner as the leader. They've got to go through, surely, at this yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. where to begin? Uh, <laughs> let's start with that double leader. First and foremost, I think you said it yesterday, if you're going to give that leader a grade, this is the team you do it with, because if he's really that much of a tactical genius, he's going to build a team ultimately from scratch, which is what this is. Yes, there's some storied players in here. RPK goes way back. He's kind of been a stable rock. You bring Sixer in, also an old-school player that's trying to read it. But as a team, as a unit... They are new, and it's up to him to find a way to put them in the right positions. He has no idea how to use Scream right now. That's clear. Mm. The other aspect of but it is... Scream, Scream doesn't even know how to use Scream right now. Well, it's, it's true, but at some point, you've got to rely on both to kind of find their style. Like, Scream has to take the initiative to find his form like as he used to, but at the same time, Happy needs to put him in those positions. I mean, Scream even identified on day one that he doesn't even know his role on this team. And it shows, I think, in a lot of ways that Happy is too reliant on himself to make the strategy work. In that I feel like as a lurker, he feels like he has to make the play, he has to get the kills, and he's almost hoping that if he puts himself in a position, it's just going to fall into place. It's not. He needs to be more assertive. And when it's not working for him, instead of trying to change him by picking up the AWP as he's done on multiple occasions, get someone else to do something more important or, or give up on the lurking and go in and just join with straight executions. Like, there has to be more variety in his leadership, I think. And a lot of the time, you feel like he needs to be more of a delegator then rather than an initiator. I mean, a bit of both. Definitely, he's got the skill to initiate, yeah. but when that's not working, he has to know where to delegate and when to cut his losses and maybe try something different, get more multifaceted in that, that approach. Because mm. the, the smokes are there, but they absolutely horrible when they walk into sites. They're not flashing anywhere. They're not yep. checking the angles. No one really knows what they're supposed to do when they take a site. Mm. And there's been some really basic stuff as well. I remember there was mid-cache. They just walk three past sandbags, don't yep. even check it, and then gun down. I mean, that kind of thing, you just kind of go, well, that's astonishing. You just don't expect a team of this caliber to kind of make those I mean, in general, you see, mistakes. they're making a lot of individual plays, but not in the sense of like, oh, this is the star player. His job is he can make... No, they just do it. Like, for example, I remember there was a game on cache, I think it was yesterday, where... There was a smoke. Sixer just ran through it, had a look around. No, nothing. They just went back. Yeah. Like, well, there was another. It, there was another know, round. There's no logic or, or as to what they're sure. doing. Like, like he wasn't doing that, knowing that a teammate's going to follow up or they're going to go somewhere. So, what, so what's the issue? Stuff. What's the issue with all of this? What, what is it? What is it encapsulated <coughs> by? Is it, is it a lack of confidence in the play well, style? Is it a lack of playing together? What is it? I, th well, I think it is. A, it's just an experience of playing together, and that's where I say, like, like for example, if you take Dignitas, who looked equally as bad in terms of their team execution, Rubino has gone every night and looked at the problems and thought, how can I individually? Not only has he looked at the problems, he's identified the specific problems. So we'll take. But speaking of happy, he's done the same thing. Uh, has been, he though? They've been because demos. They've been talking about strategy. I mean, they have, but he, he hasn't obviously clearly pinned it because Rubino identified obviously that Banana and Arch were an issue on sure. on Inferno, and they instantly adapted to take those two pieces of the map, and it all mm. fell into place because then they started playing off each other and had a set goal. Happy hasn't identified that. I think it shows. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the map vetoes. You can see the players just having their final uh, shared words between them. Uh, map veto wise, best of three. Have Envy got to get decent maps for themselves here? I mean, the thing is, they have like almost the opposite map pool to big. So as a result, you'd expect, for example, you can get Cobblestone. That's, yep. a, that's a pretty good one. Overpass, I think, is actually a, a great pick for the big guys. It's not their best map, but we just know famously that you, they don't play it in Envious. They, they never want to play Mirage or Overpass. You always want to be picking one. And then the decider being trained, like, this is this what's bizarre. I actually feel like that's where Big's given them a little bit of an edge. You know? Well, the interesting thing is Train and Cash were the ones they could choose between. And Cash, typically, Envy goes toward. They love that map. They've been horrible on it this weekend, yeah. so they go to Train. Yeah, well, and also, you know, I think a Big is actually ultimately better on, on Cash. So, I mean, I think, actually, Envious has got a pretty decent veto here. I don't see them having a lot of chance on Overpass. It's literally a map that, like, they do not play. Yeah. So... I think it's, that's it's a, a flip up with Mirage for them on that though, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the thing. That's why I like the pick from Big though. Like yeah. Big could have gone the other way and picked something they were strong on, but the problem is in doing so, they'd have to pick something that would also give Envious a bit of an edge. Right. So I think this is fairly shrewdly played from Big, and I think certainly Big will have their chances on the other maps. So this yeah. is still, all, the story is, it's still all on Envious. Like, can they win their map? Can they, can they get us to train and then do something there? So I think for Big, they're a lot more stable. Okay, well, uh, we'll just finish off talking about Envy. Um, one of the things that I did want to bring up was the performance of XMS, because it's probably been the only highlight of the team so far. Yeah, and the funny thing is, 
if you're XMS now, you start to wonder what could have been if you had stayed in that proposed LDLC lineup, you mm -hmm. know, because they had proper tactics. They used the guys that, I mean, Maniac's playing the entry on some of that and he's looking actually good. So XMS is in this team and this is exactly where you see that they're not a unit because XMS has good plays. He is aggressive. He takes initiative. He, he, he tries to kind of get out there on the map and do what you want, but there's no follow-up, you know. That, yeah. I mean, the, the best example ever was that round where he had... On cobblestone, he had all those deagle kills, and then it still ended up with losing the round. It's like if you're if you're a young player and you're coming into a team and you've got all these star names with you, it shouldn't be you that's making the plays and someone yeah. else is messing them up and no one's following up, you know. So I, I kind of feel for the guy because he's he's gotten the better salary and, and moved up to the big team, and unfortunately for him, he's just moved up to one that they, they're not a, a, a good team right now as mm. it is. Can they be a good team? Uh, in theory, like the players are there, but the problem is I look at the mixture of them and the styles and the, and the personalities even. Like you were saying there about Scream, Scream hasn't figured it out. Well, that's the problem. In every other team in the universe, one of those two figures would figure it out. The, the in-game leader would say, right, well, I'm taking an initiative and here's what you're going to do. Or the star player would say, you know what, this is what I have to do to be able to play well. So if neither people can figure it out, I think that's not a good... That kind of bodes poorly mm. for the future. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, we'll watch uh, in order to see how they figure it out, both here and in the future, of course. Uh, let's say good morning to our commentary team for our first match. These are the two H's in the box. Good morning, gents. Good morning, Paul. How's it going? Good, all good. Uh, yeah. Are you ready for this one? Big game for Envy. More than big in some ways, isn't I'm it? I'm so bored of saying this is Envy's day. Yeah. But now more than ever, it really has to be, doesn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, if the they one. don't do it today, then there's, there's, that's it for maybe six months until yeah, they qualify absolutely. for another major. Yeah, well, I'm hoping they turn up today. I think Big looked pretty woeful yesterday, so... Hopefully, that's kind of the, the gauge is still on. I'm kind of really wanting the MVP to win today. I kind of want them at the major qualifier. Mm. I'm going to say it. So, there it is. I'll okay. pick it up. Harry, are you, are, you, uh, are you keeping the rivalries fresh in the yeah, box yeah, there with keep, the big the support? Rivalry. Yeah, I'm coming in with the okay. big support. I, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, MV haven't looked that great. So, yeah. I, I think, I think Big's are bigger the one to take this. But the way the maps went, I don't know. It's a little bit up in the air. Uh, Cobblestone is a very good map for MV. So, I think they should definitely be able to take this first one. All right. Okay. Well, uh, Bring us, bring us your best and enjoy this match and uh, let's see who goes through between Envy and Big. We'll see what we can do. Thank you very much. Right, Harry, you think Big can do this? Did you watch yeah. him play yesterday? Yeah, no, I did, I did. And Pretty awful? <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't look great. The, the Inferno <laughs> in particular was... Uh, was very dire. What was it, 16-2 in the end? Yeah, like that? I think the, the whole unit kind of fell apart, it, it looked like, anyway, for yeah. me. Well, um, I mean, Gobby even looked kind of irritated by everything, and I, I've never seen him look so... Uh, we, we, had, we had punch tables, we yeah. had... Like, oh, yeah, and, and, and a the horrible atmosphere table. in the entire building. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a pretty sight. But, oh. you know, like, it was a bad day for Emily as well, you know, like, so I can't really... Blame them that much. I, I, I just I, don't think they have as much physical strength as big. Yeah, right. More things would have been <laughs> broken, maybe. Well, I don't know. I obviously sound a bit biased towards Envy. The reason I said it is because the reason these guys kind of stated we've got some of those legendary CSGO players and kind of further than that on the server right now. Happy double major winner, Scream as well. Obviously not a major winner, but still a, got a lot of legacy behind him. RPK, um, one of the biggest veterans we have in Counter Strike generally. So you would expect these guys to be able to take down. A team like Big, who for me, this, they are a great unit. The tactics are very strong, but they heavily rely on, obviously, like of Tabson, who seems to be one of the best players of this entire event. I think along with Sunny as well, those guys have been absolutely lights out. But it looks like we are ready to go live here, and it's going to be envious on the T side. It's their map, so I think they'll be quite happy getting the T side first. I think technically yeah. um, it's stronger, but uh, we'll see what Big can bring to the table here. I'm quite excited for this one. I think it's a nice way to kick off the day. Two of the, I think, favourites with the tournament coming into it now find themselves in the lower bracket. It's kind of interesting to know. But four sets of armour, and it will be six out with two flashbangs here. And that seems to be the common trend for these guys. Obviously, strategies mean you can go very fast towards A or do a little set piece towards B, depending on which way you're inclined. It looks like Keeve wants to go aggressive towards long A. Does investigate slightly, drops a decoy as well, but it'll be falling back towards danger here. Actually going to keep on holding him mid now. Takes that peek on out. Discovers that there's a whole boatload of MV players. Now starts to try to make his way back to the uh, A-bomb site. Leggy has rotated around to try and assist. They are going to go ahead and stick two players here with MV. Quick to go ahead and... I think they're trying to double fake this one out. They made it look like they were rotating on yeah. off. This is the classic NV setup though. Happy near the drop down right. And they still have a smoke and flashbangs. They still... Probably will commit towards the A side, but Happy, he normally waits until the full commitment comes and he gets the rotation kills, but it's so known for him. Everyone's aware that he does this. Surely this could be some sort of variation here. The one minute mark comes in, we'll keep our eye on Sixer because we'll know from him as to when they'll be committing. As soon as he throws his smoke, that's probably when they go for it. He's lining it up right now. We'll be going towards Connector. Here we go. It's the flashbang as well. Yeah, flashbangs raining on in. Going to leave the two players within the site with a lot on their shoulders. 
Tappy's even rotated around yeah. to join the gang. So Leggy is here up in balcony. Has to try and help the player out in the site. Kivri gets the havoc with a pistol. Gets himself three. He's still alive. Hasn't gone down just yet. And oh, Key, fantastic from him. A 4K in that pistol round somehow just stays alive, works it round in, in the kind of the corner of the site and manages to lock down that pistol. So we did see the variation. We were expecting Happy to come from the drop down area. He actually joined his team. They were probably like, Happy, do you just want to come with us this once? Do you just want to come and see what it's like? Going in as a five. And he's like, yep, I told you. I need to be about in the backstab. Um, but Keith, what can you say about that? That's unbelievable. Four kills in a real high pressure situation. If he goes down about a frag there, they probably win the round. So that's uh, very nicely done by Keith. It's going to be a force by here from Envious. And we've got UMPs and a Famous, the gear to be challenged first. He had a really rough day in the office yesterday. We saw some anger coming through from him. But there we go. Four players towards long A. Happy back towards that drop down position. The gear spots one player. I thought he'd be dropping the smoke at that point. Yeah, there it is. Just to delay them a little bit further. Means he can stay challenging this position at least and have a fullback strategy. Funnels them back towards B though. We don't have any grenades, Harry. This is a real problem getting into a bomb site on cobblestone. Not a flashbang, not a smoke. Obviously, no Molotovs. And you're just relying. You wanted the Deagles to go in first. You've got more potential to find the one shots. You can hear some interactions now towards drop down. And Tapson's boosted up. Like we said, the star player for big so far. Yeah, push down going to be coming on through. Tabson can wreak some havoc. Gets himself too. Six able to drop him out though. No one really in the best spot to try and trade this. You have got Nex up on short. Had they had the smoke here, they could just go ahead and block this off. The rotates have already come in, and Envy looking like they're locked out of this round. The Molotov, the four six out in the open. He's actually making things costly. He goes in and drops out a second now. Happy can keep him covered with the Deeg. They can get the bomb plant here, and that's perfect. Never really should have had that chance, but Happy not up to the task of covering his teammate in the 1v3, trying his best to hold this one off, but he still is yet to hit anything with this Deagle. These players aren't too healthy. He could be able to take him out. He actually missed every single shot he took just then, so that's now big 2-0 up. They go ahead and convert that second round. They keep three players alive as well. You can see Envy is there trading a couple of frags, but without the smokes, they can't segregate or even blind the CTs. It was just a matter of time before they got overwhelmed. Um, I feel like they, they needed more kills on the pistol just to get a few smokes and maybe get on the P250s just to have that utility. Obviously opted for the firepower there. It didn't really work out for them. Went towards long A at the start, found nothing. Back towards B, pretty lackluster attempt. And Envious just can't seem to get a break in this tournament, Harry. Like They can't win a pistol, get a 3-0. Every time they have got a pistol so far, it seems they lose the anti-eco and then it all falls apart. It takes them about round number eight before they even get into the half. I haven't seen them look convincing yet. Not even once in this tournament, I don't think. There haven't been like one big, quick, clean sweep before. Okay, there it is. That's what we've been waiting for. Some of the most decorated players in CSGO can finally show it to a major, a uh, major, minor. So, full eco now. And it's going to be four Glocks and Happy. He's got the PT-50 up towards danger, trying to find the gear here. He's a bit more defensive this time. Drops that same smoke and just going to be sitting behind it. It's got the UMP. Great for mowing down unarmored players. Over in mid, Tabson just going to be picking these guys off with the M4. They lining up for him, drop the bomb out in the open. They're trying to push up with these pistols, but no, Tabson in with the ace. There we go, nice and easy. Mops that one up, five players remaining for big. All the money saved, and I imagine they're just going to go for the bonus round here. I mean, no one dying in that previous basically secures that as their fate. Sure, the bonus round it is really tantalizing for the CTs. You can win this, you're off to a fantastic start. Basically means you're keeping the SMGs into the first gun round here. Problem is with CSGO right now, that's actually still really viable, especially buying the UMPs, like the old meta, and like maybe two years ago, we were using like MP7s and P90s and stuff. It wasn't as viable, right? Because it, it didn't seem as powerful and you'd get wrecked by the AK-47s. But the UMP these days seems to be able to go toe to toe, especially on a map like Cobblestone as well. Plenty of close range encounters available for you towards long A, drop down, uh, broken wall, for example, as well. So as long as you play correctly, uh, you definitely can win these sort of rounds. Envious with five AKs, no orb on either side. They've got three smokes, still struggling a little bit with not a single plant coming down after three rounds. We'll have a look at the setup for now. It's going to be XMS and six up. Just feeding out towards long. Screen will be joining them. The bomb's down in that area. RPK opens things up. That's not bad. That's towards drop down. Takes down God B. Yeah, drop can be the difference maker in this map. Taps and tries to refrag, but RPK's not having any of it. Holding the angle. Finally, next makes it work. He's only able to get one before happy. Trades that back. Now the two remaining players on these UMPs, they've worked their way down and towards middle. They're facing off against XMS and Scream, and both the players go down. They've done a boatload of damage. It is going to be a two-on-two. Bomb dropped. 
actually right near these players in mid. They don't know it yet. Six are trying to rotate back around to grab it. Happy could be the difference maker. Coming on in from behind. Six are in mid, picking off the first. Like, yeah. 1v2, only 12 HP. He's dead in one shot, so he has to be careful. Six is going to retrieve the bomber now. He's just going to look to play things safe, make his way in towards that B bomb site. And Legia, 1v2, the bonus round not working out. Only on 12 HP. Has got a full belt of utility. It means, you know, the retake's kind of viable, but at the same time, means it's that much more worth it if he does try and go for the save. But he's just going to try and go for this, rushing on through. Here's the bomb plant come in, flashes himself out. Six are within the site. Happy over it short. Happy will take him down eventually. It's definitely worth going in from the gear, right? We did say that's a bonus round for the CTs, meaning they can buy into this one. Every kill he finds, even if he doesn't win the round, is definitely going to be valuable for him. Doesn't get one, but still, it's going to be envious. Winning the, the round there, they go down to two players. So definitely potential here of uh, getting reset. We do see the orb coming out for big now. That'll be in the hands of Keeve, of course. He's been up and down, has some very impressive games or rounds, I should say, and then some very lackluster ones as well. He seems like he's one of those orbers that goes absolutely wild once every six or seven rounds and goes, drops off significantly. But we'll see what happens. He goes towards middle for now. Look at that first pick, could well get it. There is a kill available to him, but it's gonna be very close. Taking down my screen, he seems to be turning up today. Nice shot by him, neutralizes the AWPA, five on four. Don't need to commit just yet. It's up to Ligia, who's defending drop down. Oh, dangerous to say once again. Things tricky for Ligia, scream. He's tapping away on heads. He's found some form today. The rotator has come in from Nex and got B. That's going to leave Taps and all on his lonesome though over towards the B bomb site. And you can already see RPK over towards that. Happy now joining him. It's still up in the air as to where MV could head in the long run. Over here on eight, got B. And Nex. Both just playing it. Well, I was going to say both playing it passively. Next is Goppy's down in mid, playing the close angle. I'd rather see this position swipped, uh, switched up. Obviously, they can't do that now, but it doesn't really make sense to have the M4 that far forward in mid and then the UMP within the side. They've got to do something at this point. Two players down. It's desperate times, right? So, might as well see if they can get a bit aggressive here. Goppy, not known for his fragging, but there it is. Kick things off, takes down. The point man so far for Envious, Scream neutralized. At least they've got something to work with here, but XMS backstabbing. Got B still fighting there. That should be the end of his run. Three on one now. Taps and though. Here's the star player for Big. He finds a kill in that connector position. RPK drops. Now the bomb planted. Two versus one. No kit available for Tabson, but he has pushed through the connector. Once off behind him. Undetected for now. Has to be careful though. On the other side of SWAT, there is Sixer. Waiting over at long XMS. Tabson. Playing it. Very, very slowly trying to spot these players out. Gets himself up on top of Swap and Sixer spots him in. That'll be MV now soldiering on forward to a second round on the back of those nice openers from Scream. He might not have had any frags up until then, but those ones were the definitive frags that actually got that round for MV. Absolutely. Very well played by him. You can see Keeve was hunting for the kill towards middle. AWP at those mid doors, very common strategy, but normally you drop a smoke there to protect you as you're falling back. You can see he didn't really have that. Scream should be at a gray screen at that point. That's normally the idea, and Keeve took a bit of a risk taking that as he fell back. Scream pushes through, and we've had quite a lackluster tournament generally from Scream, so it's nice to see him stepping up in the last couple of rounds. It'll be 3 2 and an eco here for Big after winning the pistol. And lines have eluded them. We can see Scream dying in the last one. He'll be purchasing a MAC-10 here. Means he has a lot more mobility. And he could be a bit more audacious where he can throw himself into certain choke points. And if he loses the MAC-10, it's not a big deal. If he finds frags, he's going to be farming $600 per kill. So that's not too bad. And as he does spot one person towards danger, it's going to be Legia and Keeve once again. XMS and his teammate Sixer working towards long. Scream gets that first pick. And now they can just buy their time. Wait for the reaction to come in. And there it is. Yeah, Leggy has actually been forced on back out for long, courtesy of that Molotov. Now we're going to go ahead and retreat back into the site. The rest of Envy making their way up towards this A-bomb site. So happy flashed into the drop. Big playing this round very, very passively, these pistols. The aggression now going to be coming in from long for Envy. Keep coming in from Happy. He's here alone. He might be fully blind, but he's still finding frags. Goes ahead and takes a second. Taps him with the USP. Actually doing some good damage. Looking like he could have maybe got two... And he manages to take one, but I mean, that was no investment from him in particular. The rest of the team only bought a couple of PT-50s, so the one frag isn't, isn't that bad, all things considered. 3-3, the equalizer found is now Envy. 
they're actually showing up in these gun rounds. Yeah, it's impressive so far. Like we said, they always seem to have the rocky start with the lost pistol and then the three zero coming in, but this is looking better from them. Scream staying on the Mac 10 suggests something a lot faster will be coming in. Five players as well. I'm saying they might just bust down middle and try and have Scream lead the charge. This is an MSL style strategy, but taken down by Key. That's going to be Scream drop first, and he's got the information as well. They have to fully commit. I think they're all in at this moment. Can they recover the situation? Yeah, Sixer was fully blind now. Bomb drop. The rotates are already coming on through, and Keeve on the 3k. We saw him get four in the pistol, and now he's going to try and outdo himself. Happy and XMS, all that remain. Happy in from long, but Keeve shuts him down. Now it's just XMS 1v4. We've seen him be impressive. Oh! But Keeve! That was through the wall. You dirty man! Gets himself the ace. That was fantastic. Oh my god. I was watching that shot from my screen, right? He was in stable and just completely wall banged him through the mid ramp wall straight in the head. Like, that someone was needs to go and investigate Keeve. Can we get someone to look at that? That's honestly. So sick. Okay, well, I told you, like, he's one of those Orpos that he can have a few quiet rounds and out of nowhere he just goes absolutely wild. That was insane. So Envious, like I said, trying to change the pace there. A lot of teams trying to chuck that in when they feel like the CT side's about to adjust, maybe bring a double orb out. Got completely wrecked though. 4-3, big take the lead once again. It's going to be another force by from Envious. It's okay, they're going to go have Happy is really affected by that. He's on the Tech 9, four AKs otherwise. Keeve, he changes his position up. This is what he should be doing. Shows so much presence there towards the A side of the map. He's hoping he funnels him towards B now, and that's where he's going to be waiting. So that's quite cool to see. Still a default though from Envious. XMS and Scream Sixer. Working towards long A, some basic map control coming in. McGee and Tabson looking for challenge. RPK, first man to fall. MV already going to be losing that man advantage now over here towards long. They've got two players with that bomb in tow. I feel like they want to try and secure something out towards A here. Like, yeah, waiting over at long. Has got some support from Tabson within the site. They've still got Happy lurking over towards drop. He's making some noise, trying to cause the ruckus, and actually, next going to be rotating on off of B. Now inside the A site, three players there, leaving this all on Keeve, and got B to hold off this potential push. Happy. The man looking to try and open things from drop. Scream. Over at long, has to be careful. Keeve holding the angle, we know he's feeling it today. Now comes that solitary flashbang. Keeve going to miss the first shot. Now falls on back into the site. Has to be fast. Turns around. The Molotov there to buy him some time, but it's happy in from drop that could make all the difference. Smoke. That's reined in. Turns around with Tabson and Godby between them. They go ahead and mop this one up. Two for Godby. Keeve ought to pick one up as well. Well, then, it looks like God Beast turning up today. That's quite a rare thing to see, like actually finding really impactful frags there. Uh, it's going to be three of them, so not too bad at all. We have a tactical timeout from Envious at this point. Yeah, big. This is a much better squad than we saw yesterday. They actually seem like they're fragging as a unit, relying on one single player, normally in the form of Tapson. Have a look at the scoreboard while we're here. 11 kills, Keeve. The upper top fragging, that's not bad at all. Tapson, of course, we expect him to be the top as well. 11 kills for him. Got B5, Legia 3, next 2. That's the thing about next. I'm still asking myself daily, like, whatever happened to this player? For me, he was one of the most exciting properties we had at German CS for the longest time when he was in Mouseport. And then, ever since he left that team, he's just kind of disappeared into obscurity. Like, sure, he's in this kind of relevant lineup now, but we very rarely mention him on the analyst desk these days. Like, it doesn't seem to be a name that comes up that will make any sort of difference. And I find that a shame. I do think he can be a really talented player, but... Either way, we go into round number nine, five, three, and we're going to have just PT50s, Tech Nines starting. Oh, okay, Keith just made it himself. Be careful. Um, uh, we'll see what they can do here. It's going to be no nades. Scream's got some armor. Should be quite an open shut case for Big here. Maybe a couple of kills going against them, but don't expect much more than that. Second smoke going to land. Keep these guys at bay just that little bit longer. See Scream now turning his attention to the potential push in from that A-bomb site. Is it going to be the case? Maid finds a little bit of damage. Gobby. A lot of this is going to fall onto his shoulders when the push does come in. These pistols deadly at close range. Molotov on out. Going to force them into his clutches. He just falls on back. Finds the first. Going to keep fading away. Doesn't want to give these pistols the chance to refrag. Flashes to hold them back. Taps and chiming with one up from tree. Has to be careful because out for long. Happy is there, but he's missing all the shots. And taps and just turns around and finishes them off. Big. In with their sixth. Three for Gobby, two for Tabson, and a sixth round for the Germans. 
Yeah, they're not looking bad today, are they? It's actually quite impressive. This is a terrorist-sided map, and they've currently got the lead. And then some 6-3 in their favor. Another full buy from Envious. I don't think we've seen the AWP for six out as of yet, but he still is a very proficient rifler. They're relying quite heavily on default, Harry. We haven't seen that full execution, the wall of smokes towards B. Money has been limited, and once again, it, it's not perfect. They do have the five smokes to work with here. It's another default, but that's fine. You can go into the set pieces after getting a bit of map control here. We do have Legia this time. M4 in hand, not going to be challenging. He was thinking about it, getting towards long A. Envious once again, trying to get that first pick. They're losing Frex to Godbeer drop down consistently. Miss from Molotov. I guess they're going for those tight corners, but not really get them too much. I assume they're going for the hay bales. Flashbang's decent though. He yeah, has to fall back at this point towards danger, but Tabs then will allow him to fall back to the bomb side itself, and now we have the full default coming in. MBS looking for some control, still with two smokes, so I would say the execute at this point is going to be on the A side of the map. Yeah, that's what it's looking like right now. Legia and Tabs are going to be the two players to try and hold this one off. Got B. Has rotated on round. And we still have time left to play with. They don't have to dedicate to this one. I think they're looking to try and find something out now. This I, I think they do yeah. now, considering after yeah. lost map control. And now they've thrown in all the swings and flashes as well, using up all their very limited utility tabs and over it long. Actually, go down. The double kill comes in from six, and now the push. Going to be soaring in towards the site, and Gobby, he's rotated on round to try and help out, but isn't in a position to try and keep them out of the site. Next falls, Gobby goes down as well as RPK. Goes ahead and cements this one. Keeve in the 1v4. He has looked on fire with the AWP, but uh, this is even asking too much of him right now, so he will just look to try and save. Yeah, classic MBS round there. Slow default, slowly but surely getting some map control towards Long A, pushing the CTs back. That's normally the objective of the default. Sure, you might not be getting early frags, but you're actually getting map control in position to go for the basic execution, smoke that connector, smoke the balcony, flash out, allow your star players to eradicate some risk, then RPK comes out, and he seems to be performing now. Two great shots from him. Six are chiming in with two as well, and as you said, Keeve, the last player remaining here, saving the AWP. Money will be absolutely fine in the big camp, but this is maybe a chance for them to adjust slightly, potentially, see if they can get the all back towards middle, get into challenge long A. We, they know Envious haven't got an orb right now, so you, you, you might be safe to actually go to challenge that position at the very start and trying to take that first pick down. Here's the replay of Sixer, doing good work there, trading frags out towards long. Here's the replay for B. Seems okay, wasn't too disappointed with that one. They still have the lead. And like you said, the money is absolutely fine for big. So the orb comes out for him again for Keeve. These guys can double orb. I haven't been impressed with the gears necessarily. We saw it a few times with Mirage. It seems like he's... Very hit or miss. Like, he won a couple of clutches with it. Then also the very kind of basic shots in the back and stuff seem to elude him. And we'll have a look at that. Envious buy. I don't think they bring out all themselves. Money's not great. A lot of reset potential here. But a tactical pause. Coming in now for big. I think this might be technical. Because they're saying they don't want the coach to be unpaused. So we'll see whether they can... Figured that one out, but for now, Keeves or the AWP, they're yet to buy oh, into right. it. right. Yeah, apparently uh, the, the coach wasn't unmuted, so oh, they I haven't see. actually been able to speak this whole time. <laughs> yeah, so they don't want to... So yeah, for anyone who's not familiar, we're in the, the Valve rule set, obviously it's the official minor, and it means you get four pauses per game, per map, and in, that's the only time the coach can talk. And I don't know, it was a controversial thing when it happened, right? Obviously, the coach became like a career path in Counter-Strike generally to kind of be an in-game leader, a tactician for your teammates, and then Valve almost stifled them completely by saying you get 30 seconds per break. But for me, yeah, it was devastating at the time and we lost like maybe a tactical edge, but I still feel like this is the right way to do it. I don't think the yeah, coach... Yeah, definitely. I no, think like the in-game in leader should be a skill set that's required of a Counter-Strike player. I think there's a lot of pressure. It's very difficult to manage, and that's why we're seeing... It being such a big talking point right now, especially on like the North American scene. They don't have in-game leaders, and it's something you have to learn. And I think it's too much of a crutch to have a guy who can sit back and call for you. I, I think that's I think that's too easy. So I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it just meant that we saw kind of teams compiled the five players who were really good at aiming, but maybe didn't sure. have like any of the ability to kind of make the mid-round calls. And, and you would just have, you know, some guy who's really, really smart sitting there yelling orders at the rest of the team. Yeah. So I think this is the better it's way to go. This is the way Counter-Strike's been for the last 12 years. This is how it should be played, you know? So I, I don't disagree with that. It was, it was tough at the time, but uh, we got there. I think it's everyone's accepted it now. 6-4, round number 11. No all for the T side. I'm having a look at Keeve, but he is going aggressive. Not towards A this time. Does challenge on the upper platform. Rattles off a shot, but doesn't get anything for it. 
Be into a default once again. And Envious haven't seen much execution from them at all here on Cobblestone. Just been defaults, positional control, trade out frags. Very basic game plan, but they are the better players across the board, so it does make sense. Nothing too flashy coming in yet. Happy just wants to work the map. And here we go once again towards long A and middle. Yeah, both the players on long. Get a full one back. Don't want to try and... Uh take their chances, taking these duels early on against the Envy players. Why would you scream? The rest of the gang are going to be making their way out towards Long to try and open this one up. Now the third player rotating in from B, this time in the form of Nex. Looking like... Tabson spotting over the top there. Going to be uh, jumping over the wall, looking down to mid. Doesn't spot anyone out. This does lead them to believe that there's players over at Long Keith. Finds Happy. You can pretty much guarantee he's on his lonesome. That's he goes down. Man. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you're not going to react to that, Kira. He's going to be like, okay, well, they're probably just coming A at this point. They're unhappy for nothing but XMS through the smoke. Takes under the gear. We have a chance here, but Nex and Tabson going to town on Envious. That's going to be the 4 on 2 advantage now. Screaming RPK, trying to do all they can. Up to RPK, who has been good so far. Trying to find his first frag. They're doing some work here, but Nex. I called him out at the start of the game, Harry, and he looks to be stepping up right now. Three kills in a round for him. Actually, quite impressive ones at that. So, Envious, this is the problem they have generally. They don't really mix up the kind of happy role, right? They could do it. We've discussed this before. They could actually have, like, four players waiting in the B halls area, right? And then Happy lurking by himself, just, like, waiting there, waiting for him to show presence, and he gets a kill. And instead of going the other side of the map, they could go in with that and, like, just make it kind of the old, like, bait and switch, you know? Like, kind of, oh, they know, obviously know what we do. Let's throw something else in there. But, uh, I don't know, this, this standard of him drop down every time or other platform, he gets picked. It's so obvious what they're doing, in and my head, at least. It's, it's kind of exactly what we used to see, if you think about it, with, like, get right, right? And it got to the point where it's like, oh, you killed him over on B, or well, then Nip are probably going to be going A. And Happy's got that same uh, sort of... Uh, everyone knows that his role is the lurk, it's and everyone just, knows he's the very name happy coming yeah, up. Yeah, right? exactly. So it's, it's unfortunately for him. I, I do agree. It definitely can work, and it, it's something great to have in your wheelhouse um, to throw it in every now and then as an in-game leader. If you can call for your teammates when the right time to commit is, and you found the information, that's fantastic. But I feel for him at this point, especially in this tournament, sticking as a five-man unit and using their firepower to overwhelm their opponents, that might be the better portal call. But for now, though, it's going to be round number twelve. Envious on another eco here. Big looking to extend the lead to eight to four. We have two sets of armor, one flashbang. Not looking too convincing, but we do have XMS who's snuck in all the way towards long A. Has got to the end there, but look at Keeve watching him like a hawk. I don't think he'll be getting much further than that. Yeah, RP Gate. Actually going to make things work over in drop. Drop sound card B. That's going to put a bit more pressure on the players on this A bombs. Like they know they can't rely on the rotate. They know that connector is now open. The players on B haven't, haven't actually rotated around to try and secure that. So. They have to be weary now. The push comes in from Envy in towards this ace. Like, Keeve gonna miss the first shot over at long. Doesn't, however, miss the second. Chimes in with that. XMS goes down. Like, you're a mid, making quick work of these guys. And oh, it all ends in a matter of seconds. Happy holding the angle. Bomb down out in mid, and he will fall. Big eight to four, a four round advantage on their CT side. Looking good heading forward. Have we been excited by the T side Envy has presented so far? Has it looked dynamic? Have we seen much kind of strategic prowess so far? I'm going to say no. Have we seen an execute anywhere? Apart no. from very basic defaults yeah. into a smoke connector flashing out, which is fine. If that's your game plan, I don't mind it. But when it's getting to this sort of point, and you're actually just straight up losing the jewels consistently, I'd say maybe it's time just to kind of throw one of those in, see if we can overwhelm. Smoke's down in B, Molotov's in, flashbang's over, try and segregate the CTs. But they actually look very comfortable right now. Don't have to change their game at all, but... They are sending four towards B at the start here. Ligia could be challenged a bit more quick. It's going to be Flashbang coming in. Bomb in front of him and two players towards long A. Next takes a bit of damage there and Scream. He'll be picking up that bomb and by himself. He needs to be very careful. Luckily, he's got backup from Danger. That should be the gear going down all day long. That's better. Okay, we have that first pick now, Envy. Yeah, rifle picked up for Scream as well. A little bit more of a fighting chance for Envy into this round. They've had that first man advantage now uh, a couple of times. And usually we see them take the round on the back of it. Turning their attention over here towards B. Happy. Worked his way into drop. Peak looking to come through from God B, but no spotted out in the open. He's going to fall. Next to try and refract. This has to be quick. Happy tagged away, but he's still alive. And next, you can't go down here. This is a duel you should have never lost. He's been tagged down so low. Now, 
does finally pick it up on a happy. The trade comes in instantly from 6-7. Oh. Keeve turns it all around, gets the collateral and pulls this one back into the realms of possibility for Big. They're not done just yet. Bomb has gone down. XMS and Scream into the 2-1-2. Two -two. XMS over on platform wants to try and spot Keeve out, but doesn't want to risk taking this peak. He's tacked down very low. Now the push could be coming in from Tabson. Into the site. Scream spots him out. Tabson. Fires that first shot out. Now it's all XMS over on platform. He's got to try and clutch this out 1v2. Bomb timer ticking away. Spots the first. Does damage onto Keeve. Still has Tabson left to find. Chipping away, but no. Can't quite connect the shot. Tabson's out of ammo. Switches out to the USP and does pick up the frag. Going to go for the defuse. And I think there's just enough time left, but it's going to be very... No. Yeah, that's fine. How have they not won that? What's Scream's position about? He's waiting in the hover hole, right? Like, why is he not set up? They've got time. They've planted. He sits in that open position. Yeah, he's got great aim, right? But we haven't exactly seen that this tournament. He's in the hobby hole position. He needs to be something like beneath the tree while his teammates on the platform set. That's a good spot, right? That's absolutely fine. But why scream not at least behind the bomb site, beneath the tree, chicken coop, anywhere but the open? You're so vulnerable to flashbangs and players facing you two on one. That was pretty nasty to watch, actually. And that's envious with the upper hand once again, Harry, to get that first pick in middle. Funnel back towards B. They've got a great start there, but Keith, like he said, seems to be stepping up in the really key situation. He's actually got how many kills? Now, 16 kills for him, 16 kills for Tabson, and they run away at the round. It looks really dicey there, but RPK and six there. It was the kill on screen that I couldn't really believe. Like, why is he in such an open position? He, he looked, he looked very, himself? very relieved when, <laughs> when he did that. Yeah, those are the kind of things. He's like, well, I'll take that. Two for one. Not too bad. And envious misery continues. Round number 14, third save loss bonus, and back to the Deagles and Tech Nines. They have got some fast mid control, though. Keeve, oh, he's stuck in a horrible position here. AWP, he knows they're in danger as well. Some close range orping. Just what the doctor ordered, but he can't find the shot, and now XMS finds the AWP. On the back of this as well, RPK's been allowed to work his way in it through drop. Happy is right behind, and I think they only think he's there alone because they've already turned away. Next is tagged down very low, and now falls to Happy. This is where the lurk has actually worked. Legia. Down in mid, able to find the first. Has to watch out because now Happy pounces from behind, and this is perfect from Happy. He's on two. Are they going to account for Gobby over at long? Happy will go down. Now pushing on up. It's Scream, and he has to stay alive within the site, but he can't find the frag onto Gobby. Six are coming from behind. The smoke goes down, but he's just going to push straight on through. It's the right call to make. Gobby completely unprepared, but Six are still falls, and Gobby prevails. Now it's all on Scream. 15 HP and a dream, and Tabson, the dream killer, puts a stop to him as Big now soldier on forward and get themselves a tenth. They do nothing working out for Envious here, getting the first couple of picks once again. Just can't find the round victory, and it is going to be the end of the first half here. Round number 15, Orb comes out for sixer, finally. I'm just going to have a look at the scoreboard for Envious in general. So, let's talk about the star players, Harry, for this Envious lineup. If we come into this tournament, we're thinking, Scream, RPK, they should be the heavy hitters, right? Historically. XMS, uh, as of this event. And we've definitely. got Scream, three for 12. Right. That's... Not the aim star. This is a tier two event, right? He should be devouring these players and getting 40 bombs each game. You think, well, someone like Scream, he'll be having the sickest game right now. No, three for 12. RPK, not much better. Seven kills for him. And Big looks like the better unit right now. They're just absolutely running away with this one. It's not the end of the game just yet. Obviously, anything can happen in the second half. We know Big's T side's half been poor as well. All it takes is a lost pistol and they can get right back into this. But here we go then. Towards long A once again. Some interactions towards upper platform as well. Got B boosted up. They'll just be smoking off there and falling back. Even Gobby's presence just instilling a kind of fear into Envy that now they've worked away from B. Three players actually, in response, made their way over here towards Long to try and see if they could spot some success out towards the A-bomb site. Keeve within it, within it. Could it be up on the AWP? Leg yet there as well. And Envy, I mean, they've just grinded to a halt. It was like we're going to see some aggression early on. And they have slowed right down since. Bomb. On the back of six, they're going to be making its way over here towards long. They've left actually RPK on the flank, so almost like they're switching up these roles a little bit, which I do like. The rest of MV are going to be lining up these smokes and flashes once again in towards A. Something that's much more detailed. Though. To be fair, they've only got one smoke remaining, so maybe it's not. Smoke towards connector, keep everything things up, and he's looking so comfortable. This is too easy for him. Where's the pressure? I mean, there's none, and he, there is. He's looking to try and alleviate happy up close. 
Can look to try and go in through the murder hole. The rest of his team pushing into the site, holding off these rotates, but doesn't find the frag on a god B in the blink of an eye. It's all unhappy. His teammates fall within the site. And oh, God. Happy goes down as well. There, there he is. I mean, the man, Keeve. He, he's been on fire. And that's the thing I love about Keeve. You no, know, he'll have games where he is, quite frankly, awful, I'll be honest with you. And then he'll have games where he steps up. And, you know, he, he even competes with the likes of Tapson, someone who we look at in this team to be the star player. And then sometimes you just have Keeve awaken and become this sentient beast that wrecks everyone. I wish Envious would turn up like that. I said at the beginning of this game, surely this is the day. But that's just so average from them. Like, nothing at all I'm excited about. A few defaults where they got some decent trades. They managed to get four rounds on the board on the T side, Cobblestone. This one is supposed to be one of their best maps. And where's the execution? Where's the, where's the flair? There's just nothing right now. They're looking like they're out of their depth against a team like Big. You just you wouldn't expect to say that. Still, uh, still early days, and, and you're already triggered. I mean, this, I know, is, this right? is only map one and Envy. I'm just frustrated with them. I'm, just, I'm getting a bit sick of this. Not good enough. Well, uh, one thing is for sure, big. They're looking fantastic over the woods long. Got beat. Able to open things up. XMS goes down. They've already now got themselves the two-man advantage. Scream. Master of the, uh, well, it used to be the X-Master of the one taps, but looking to try and maintain that title. Just going to go ahead and dispatch the taps and makes it look easy. But in big in response, they've rotated around 2A very, very quickly. Two players just launching this offensive up through ramp. Screams rotated around to try and help out. Sixer within the site has to be the one to try and hold on to this. And also working in from behind, it's got B on this flank. RPK has been tagged low and actually smoked up at the site. In comes got B and now this is where things get tricky. Scream having a pivot round. Big, they're just crawling all over the site and Scream can't get it done. He's gonna fall big. They pick up the pistol and now they're looking fine. Big aren't even looking that hyped from the winning pistol round. So yeah. it's like, oh, this is just kind of easy now, isn't it? This Fast kill towards other platform, full back away. No one seems to be really fragging at all. Four kills, 14 deaths of Scream, and they're going to have to force by here. This is a must win round for the French side at this stage. So, what's the buy from big? Four UMPs and an AK 47. On the other side, we have three Deagles, a 5.7, and a PT 50, one flashbang. Six up, a little bit more modest considering he's your, but no armor for him. Okay, well, lose this round is 13 4, potentially 14, because they could be fully connected next round, Harry. So, this is Envy's map pick. You wouldn't have thought so, would you? Well, that, that's what I was going to say, right? The scariest prospect here for Envy is Cobble is a map that they should have won. It's a very good map for them. Yeah. Overpass is a map that they've played once. It, like, it's oh, in, 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 in the last three months. It's one. Of, it's their insta ban. So, oh, God. How's that happened? Yeah, the, <laughs> they, they just really didn't want to... I think it was Mirage that they vetoed out that they really didn't want to play. No, not about this. This would be so heartbreaking. I mean, this is one that Envy really did have to pick up into this round. I mean, they have forced more down what they can. We saw them play it for the first time in this event in the last three months, and it looked okay, but... Well, anyway, Envy. They forced up what they could. Keeve already rotating back over here towards A, and actually, Six has gone aggressive out through long. This could benefit them a little bit. He's going to hear the players rotating in early. Can get the call on through. Scream already rotating around, as is Happy. They're going to be very preemptive, but they're actually already up ramp. This is where you have to see Sixer turn up in a big way. He has to try and find something. And actually, the bomb's already making its way back over towards B as RPK falls. So to MV in this retake. It's going to be the uh, four on four. Tabson's not looking too healthy. Got B's been tagged low, so this was still possible. MV coming on round. Bomb. Gonna go down within the site. Scream finding some damage out with the D. Chipping away at Legio. He's not looking too great all of a sudden either. But Keevan next. Pull it back. It's all on Sixer. And uh, at this point, I feel like maybe Happy's leaning across playing on the PC because he's in the 1v5. Sixer. Not really much he can do here. There's no armor bomb down. Possibly saving the Deagle for next round. Not a single kill up to hand. A lot of damage, but you don't really get any points for that, unfortunately. So, money found for big. They know it's a fully connect round, like I said. It's 13-4 now. Almost certainly going to be 14-4. This map seems like it's done. Envious have not arrived at all. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they can win the first gun round and then not make a single mistake. But this doesn't look like they're, they're motivated, really, to kind of win these maps. Like, was, uh, that T side for me was just... It was just awful. It was just like a mixed team had turned up. It's like, right, we don't actually have any set pieces, so we'll just do this default. You guys wear this pick. 
Then if we get it, then we'll just commit in with that one smoker connector. It's like, it's just not detailed enough. And Big, they're a team that's got bucket loads of strategies. They've got fakes and executions and variations of it, and then bait tactics as well. Like it's, that's what you want to see from a team like that. Like they know they haven't got the firepower, so they compensate with a lot of strategies here. And they can get the bomb down consistently. I can't really think of a time the bomb, I think the bomb down went down twice in the first half. If that. I mean, when your T side's that, that bad, it's, it's always going to be hard for Envy to try and make their way back into this one. Big, this should be a relatively simple one from them. Five players, four Envy over here towards B, but actually, I mean, four of them are in connectors. So even if Big did go fast down towards B, the rotates would be there immediately, but they're not in a great spot to actually try and keep them off the site. At this point, Big doing a great job of just kind of feeling things out early on. You can see they didn't commit to B. They didn't just go rushing in. They've taken it very slowly the second yeah. they encountered the two players in drop. Well, that's what you want. You want to make sure so many teams at this level make the mistake of second round. They try and just commit to something very quickly, right? And sure, that can work and it's fine. But if you want to guarantee the round victory, full default, use your utility, go for the first pick. That's all you need to actually almost guarantee the, the win. You get five on four situation. Made the CTs react to that, try and work out there's a stack towards a particular map, or a particular bomb site, I should say, and then you're going in together, trading out frags. You don't want to be rushing into stacks with CZs and 5.7s waiting for you. It can be very deadly. For now, though, they have got that man advantage, and it's going to be a B side attack. Got B patrolling the flanks. That's not bad. He might go down into RPK, which he does, but the round's already over. Some players fighting back here. 14 4. Definitely happening now. Scream. What? Dead. <laughs> Oh, that's best sudden. Present. Oh, does get it. Actually, he's going for the knife. It was looking good. I like the sudden camera transition. Like the, that was it was a sense of urgency that we needed because we're not seeing much in game. So instead, we get it with the, with the live action of the uh, big team. But yeah, 14-4. The buy now can come in at four. I mean, they're gonna get the orp up on six. Uh, I mean, this could be the change they need on their CT side, right? We never really saw them with any money. Sure. Uh, in in that first half, if you remember, that was kind of their main downfall. Yeah. Well, that among other things. Scream getting the knife, obviously they're worth its weight in gold because it allows them to get the orb up on Sixer. Yeah, he dropped that over. So, yeah, it, the game's like not done yet, don't get me wrong. Obviously it's looking very bad for Envious, but whenever there's a team to make a comeback, this would be it, at this tournament at least. Here we go, round number 19, all for Sixer as we mentioned, and we'll see where he's positioned towards top mid for now. And we did say big, they rely very heavily on the strategy. Almost the opposite game plan will be coming in as to what we saw from Envious here. They've got the smokes and Keeve back on the AWP himself. As we hit the 1 minute 20 mark, nothing really obtained. Very slow pace so far. And Keeve is towards middle right now. He can flash over towards middle to get the first pick. Going for the wall banks. It can work out. We have seen that a few times pay off, but not right now. Once again, it's a slow start here from Big. Got B and Keeve clearing out long. Tabson going to be spotting down in towards drop. RPK is there, but they're playing it passively. You can see that they're going to go ahead and stick happy on the other side of connector. This does allow a very decent hold of drop, all things considered. If you can get the player trapped in there, that's fantastic, as long as you win your duels elsewhere. If, if you lose them, then he becomes your biggest problem, right? So uh, if Tabson does decide to drop on down, especially now that they're rotating happy off, you could do damage. Scream going to take the aggression in mid. A little bit unnecessary. As I was saying, they had to win their duels elsewhere because now it mainly falls on the Sixer within a trying to rotate into positions happy, but now he's here alone within the site. RPK's rotated on round to try and assist, as is XMS. Now this is where Tabson flanks in from the back. Happy. Oh, he's so lucky it's not spread far enough. He can still win this round. He just has to deny the bomb plant. That's all he has to do, but no. Keeve with the D makes it look easy. Get wrecked. Nice game's over. What is this? 15-4. Envious there, losing every single duel. No one oh. finding the shot. That point in his best of three. This is the point now where if Envious do lose this game, his best of three generally, they're not going to the major qualifier. Not the major, they're not going to make it to the next stage of the qualifiers. And they just had a really successful event over in Dallas, like coming top six, getting out of the groups and everything. It's looking good. And right now, they just, they look amateur, I have to say. Did Keith get a kill here? Oh, is this this next round? No. What is the replays? What's going on here? <laughs> I was going to say that was nuts. How did that happen? It's the next round. Okay. So this makes sense though, right? Because um, he knows they're going to be really low money, desperate to try and find the first pick. The buy is not great. Mag 7, Famous, UMP, 57 P250. There you go. That's the list over. And um, not really much else. No kits. And this should be the end of the game. 
but CSGO is never really that kind to anyone. It will probably take a few more rounds, I'd imagine. Oh, XMS going to walk straight past yep, the first. We go. Oh, and this could be the difference maker. There There's a go. player in behind him, though. He doesn't actually know that the leggy is already out on platform. And he spots him. That shot misses. Now they know Leggy is here. Leggy is isolated from the rest of the team as well. A perfect oh. chance for them to try and turn this advantageous. Scream with the Mag 7, chiming in with one more. It's not over and said just yet inside the B bomb site. Is happy, worming his way around the site. Is going to fall to Gopi. Now it's a three on three. It was looking promising early on, but Envy risking it. This one slipping through the net. Leggy through the smoke. Spots out RPK, turning his attention. Long keep, just no scope sixer. Then a 16 HP through that smoke, and this round is not looking good. Trap now in the corner, flashes himself out, shoulder peaks, but Keeve locks it down. A big 16 to 4. Oh, On dear. MV's map pick. Supposedly MV, one that, of MV's best maps. That's the headline, right? This this is wasn't a good performance from MVS across the board. Losing both pistols, that's rough, right? I'll give him that. Um, but at the same time, the T side, that was just shocking. That was not uh, a good Counter Strike team's approach to how to play the map. There was no real variation. They're doing a default every single time. The only thing they really changed up, they did a fast mid at one point, down five players together, which sometimes can work, but they got completely wrecked by that five man from Kiev. Let's try and focus on some of the good things from Big as well. They actually looked like a really strong unit. Kiev was lights out today. So was Tavson once again, looking fantastic. Um, they were looking great on that CT side, but I have to say the headline for me is envious. Not really turning up once again. Right. This is the kind of last chance to leave for them in this best of three. If you're not going to bring the tactics to the board, you're just consistently running this default of happy, baiting on the other side of the map, trying to get a pick. If it's not working, you need to go back to those set pieces. Those, where's, where's the wall of smoke? Where's the segregation? Where's the old classics that you can rely on and allow your star players to turn up there? Scream, I think he finished on five frags in total. Not good enough. Paul, what did you think? Uh, pretty much the same as you, Henry, really. I, I, I'm just... I said to Duncan when we were watching that, the frustrating thing about this is, is we're all Envy fans. We all want them to do well. And day after day, they come in and they're absolutely rubbish. It's unbelievable. I, I, where do they go from here? They've got, they've got to get out of this match. Yeah. I mean, the key thing is, I'm not a fan of this team. I'm a fan of some of the players. Some yep. of the yeah. players no, are absolutely. fantastic. In yep. fact, almost all of them you know, have some place in... But this, it's just clear to me after watching LDLC, watching Envious... I feel like there just needs to be a mini shuffle. Obviously, we're not going to get anyone out of G2, but you take like those guys that are in Misfits, take Devil, I mean, where is he, you know? He, he yeah. had some place. Take the LDLC guys, the MBS guys. You could get a good team out of these ones, whereas at the moment, it's just it's not a functional team. That's the problem here. It's just, it's just so frustrating, Matt, isn't it? Watching yeah. a team like this, where you know the players of, of, of such high quality, great history, and, and it just not... I mean... That's a, that's a great picture, really, of happy because it kind of sums it up, really, as to how frustrated we are watching I, it. I don't really know what they're they're doing. Yesterday, they sat here after they lost in the morning in front of five computers. And they all demos, looked at, heck, I'm assuming, they were all yeah. looking at one screen together and talking, so it wasn't like they were practicing, but maybe no. they were trying to review stuff. But it, it's neither side is clicking for them right now. They got the three rounds. They went 3-3, three, three, and I went, all right, this looks okay. Yeah. And then the fourth gun round, they just walk into Kiev, who just single-handedly batters them. No one goes to long. No one puts a smoke out in front of him. He just sits on the corner, and then after the first guy dies, instead of a flash command, RPK just jumps over the wall in the air with an AK and goes, oh, wait, this was a bad idea. Dead. Like, what? It, it's, it's it's just careless, All right, the whole well, thing. I, we've kind of done Envy to death. Um, let's let's talk about the positive of this match in the form of Big, because they, they did nothing wrong in this game. No, I mean, flawless CT side. And obviously, they're a team that they're not particularly known as some powerhouse on Cobble. That's why it was Envious's pick. You know, yeah. you'd have thought this was the map that could have tilted towards the Envious guys. But no, I think what you've seen is there's a great structure in Big. They they get a lot of out of the, the star names in the team. I mean, obviously, this was one where Big got a lot out of Kiev. I mean, I don't necessarily think it was the star of the team, but if, if you put him in position, and if, you, if you're, by the way, if you're an opera and you're playing long range on Cobblestone, people yeah. are one by one coming out, that's your dream. You're going to farm yeah. those kills all day. So, yeah, Tabson, as usual, if you attack his position, he's going to get two, three. So, when you, that's what is interesting and exciting about the big team. It's like they have some star power and the tactics on the T side, but actually on CT side, they're pretty stable as well. So, yeah. I, I feel like they're one of the few teams where if they get through, I mean, obviously, still got a map to go here. If they can get through to the qualifier, they at least have a chance. They can match up against yeah. some teams, maybe maybe cause some upsets. They play to a decent level. Yeah, and MVP for this particular uh, match is Keith. Uh, had a very, very good game indeed. An impact rating of 6.2 in here, an ADR of 107.8. Some of the highest that we've seen, and look at the kills to death ratio. You know when well. you do that thing? Four for five. Where the, the trick is, when you fold your arms like that, you just push out on that fist. It makes it look like you 
got muscles, even though you have not in any way <laughs> I been do in that the gym every in your photo life. ever. <laughs> yeah. You have never been in the gym in your life, mate. Also wow. true of me. Yeah, I know. I, I know. need to remember that's a good Works. trick. It does look good, though. Look, yeah. that looks like he's, he's ripped there, isn't he? That's a good trick. That's my arm. Um, Thanks for that, Duncan. Yeah, I, not bad, that one. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Uh, so, I mean, where do we go now, Matt? Uh, we two. go into the next map. It, it's, it's not and we pray. We <laughs> sit. I'll bring okay. some yoga mats. Okay. We can all face okay. them toward the Quran, and we can just sit and pray because <laughs> things are Mecca really, really bad. Mecca, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, the, we'll put a Quran in the room. Let's though. just not mention that word yeah, anymore. Let's, that, you it's know. fine. <laughs> I'm sticking with the Bible myself. You know. <laughs> just Calm down. Opinion. It's all banter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, though, I, I have no hope <laughs> at this point. If you're going to play that individual, and, and for the record, no one got over yeah. double digits. It wasn't even like one player was stepping up, which at least they've had that in some of the losses that someone's finding some kills. If you're going to go back, Back to, he's, he's still losing it just over here. Just stop the hashtag. Just, just we <laughs> sadicist. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to go, if you're going to go to, I mean, Big's, Big's back on it. Like Duncan said, they had one bad game and they were one of the two teams, Envy obviously being the other, surprisingly, that I would have picked to, to actually win this whole thing just because of their structure yeah. and the way they've been playing and Tabson's firing, Keeves going. I don't think they have a chance, Envy. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I think this is done. This is a 2-0 right now. I mean, that, that, that was their map. You know, that, yeah. everything should have gone in their favor. They got to start on T side as well. Like, uh, this should be a routine victory for Envious. Mm. So what, what's going to change after three days? You know, it's not like they had great games before. And we're just trying to see if we can recapture that. Their great games were two weeks ago or something. So I have to, you even look at them, they look... There's another problem they have in terms of the in, inner personalities. They don't have the veteran who's like the one who's going to pump everyone up, who's going to give a great speech. There's a lot of very quiet guys in that team, so I feel like they're just done at this point in time. It's kind of, it feels bad somehow saying it's that. It's okay, right? though. It's just like it's like ripping a plaster off. You know? It's going to hurt right now, but yeah. it'll be better when it's done. Okay? It's, okay. Yeah, it's well, just get it over with. Yeah, the, right. thing, the thing is as well, like if they come in and play bad on day one, you know, I could still get behind them and say, like, all yeah. right, let's go. It's still envy. It's, they've played bad consistently this whole event. They don't deserve it at this point, in my opinion, if, mm. like, especially with the experience they have. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, with faith as well. When we were talking about faith, I, I have faith in them. They are good players. Okay. They're, they're legendary players. So day one, you, as Matt said, you kind of go, well, it's sure, day yeah. one, and they aren't a particularly good day one team anyway. We've sure. seen that before, historically. Okay, so we'll wait for them to come back in and date it. They'll click day two. And then when they don't day two, you're kind of like, well, that's a bit of a worry, but they're still great players. They've got experience. They know how to get out of this truck. And then when they come in today and they do the same... That faith is kind of eroded, isn't it? I don't it? think Even they have faith in themselves. Fans, you know. For hardcore yeah. fans, I'm talking about. The, the, the Envy fans must be out there going right now, going, I, The only faith in this game out this? is God B. It's his name, in case you guys didn't know. God yeah. B. Faith is his first name. Well, it's fatty, fatty, fatty. Okay. fatty yeah. but it's yeah. close you can, enough. You can just go with it in many ways. <laughs> You, you can play, you, <laughs> play along with the jokes, Duncan. You're okay. wrecking me this second. Okay. Come yeah. on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. As a dyslexic, you are right. His yeah. name is Faith. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. As a nanogram, job. absolutely. Yes. His name is Faith. We're yeah. all, I'll go we're with all, that we're all well. on the same page now. All right, Some of us are reading it backwards, but we're there. All right. Uh, we are going to check in with our social media uh, thread right now. The last one is up and running on Reddit, so head over onto Reddit, Global Offensive Reddit, and uh, add your questions to it. Uh, the first one this morning from the thread is, does Big have the potential to upset a big name in the offline qualifier um, we sort of touched on that a yeah, little, a little bit. bit. They have the, the potential, don't they, in the team? Well, first of all, especially as, as we've pointed out many times, it's not like the offline qualifier is just a murderer's row of all the best things. There's teams there who are only there from legacy. You know, they're sure. there because Flipside magically somehow gets there. I don't know, they must have some sort of cursed monkey paw type scenario going on that <laughs> yeah. they're allowed to always make the major but never go far. I don't know what goes on with that. Then you've obviously got the optic. You've got these NA teams there that maybe are a little bit disjointed. So the key for me with Big is not only do they have some tactics in a system, but they've shown us in this tournament, they've really expanded their map pool. Like they can play the maps that they're not good on, you know. So mm. that's ideal for Swiss system because you have those three bands. You're going to be down there either in the middle of your map pool or playing a map their opponent's at least decent on. So I think they have a chance. The thing is, upset like I think they could get upsets I don't know that I'll go ahead and say I think they'll make the major yeah okay. I'm on the same same boat I mean a couple of things to mention I, I made a tweet last week saying like no NA team might make this major because they all look so disjointed but after seeing the, some of the states of these teams in this European minor I think there's a good chance that Liquid could make it through I think there still is but there is there is spots available for sure mm -hmm. there's teams that are struggling and I think Big at least has the structure where if – that's the thing. We're talking about the individual play of sort of Dignitas, and I think they've got potential to build, and if they continue to build, I'll be very impressed. But individualism won't, as you reach a higher level, won't carry you through, whereas Big at least has some structure. The one thing they don't necessarily have is firepower, but if Tabson and Keeve can get rolling, then, yeah, the upset's there. They could actually qualify. I could see them actually mm. making it into one of the spots. I mean, overall, with the 15 teams that we've got looking for our 16th out of these two, it does look like a competitive qualifier, though, doesn't it? I mean, the, the quality of the team in terms of the way they're matched up against each other could be quite close, couldn't it? Yeah, I, 
Yeah. I mean, a Ty Lue, for it's instance. The I just throw a Ty Lue in there. Yeah, you know what? Actually, this could be Ty Lue's first chance that they actually could get through. I mean, obviously, they beat Renegades again. Renegades has had some decent results, but they're inconsistent. Optic, I have no idea what to expect. It is really an open door at this point. Mm. I think there's maybe two teams, three teams in that qualifier, I'd say, guaranteed to spot through, and yeah. then after that, it's open. It's because yeah. that's the byproduct of what happened with all the, all the super teams forming, where you got all yeah. the talent getting condensed in the top eight, and a lot of them are the Legends teams at this point. Right. It means that... There's not those teams that have like the one really great player and then this one has the gr So it's a lot more even at tier two for me. And that's why actually this one's going to be pretty wide open. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it safe to say that any of the teams could get through? I or don't know there about a couple? that. Like here's the thing. You guys who watched the Asia Minor might, might believe in them and say, oh, that's all good things, you know. I'll go ahead and just say none of those teams will get through. You don't like, think so? Like, come on, mate, Renegades. I don't think Nifty's Renegades not making it to the major, mate. I'm telling N you that right Nifty, now. Nifty played out of his mind yeah. in that Asia Minor. If he could minor. only play in the Asia Minor every day of his life, he'd be <laughs> a superstar, mate. Unfortunately, he's going to be playing against some well, other I, teams. I'm so. a converted Nifty fan, okay. so I'm on, I'm on the Renegades train. Okay. I think they can do it. I'm, I'm just trying to... Th I, mean, I, 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 I'm I would also go ahead say, and say I think this is the first one Flipside doesn't make. I don't know okay. what yeah, logic they that. would have to make at this point. I could definitely see that, which opens up a spot. Yeah, to say any team can make it, I don't know about that. two spots, don't forget. Because we've got nine qualifiers. There's That's only true. seven legends That's true. Teams, So yep. Yep. there is at least one going to go through. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I, th I don't think any team, I don't think any is the operative word, but there's definitely some teams from the minors that will be in the major. Absolutely yep. this year, no question. All right, okay. Uh, let's uh, get back to the game in hand. We are almost ready for our second game of the day. Envy on the verge of not making, check this, the offline qualifier that leads to the major. This is a major team who have won the major before. Players in the team have won it as well and they are on the verge of going out at the earliest possible stage they could ever imagine themselves playing. Or can they step it up and bring it back? They are 1-0 down to big and on the verge of going home. Let's uh, rejoin our commentary team for game number two. <laughs> 